Mr. Thomas Khrushchev, Special Envoy for Climate Change, welcome to Singapore. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends of the environment and friends for climate action. Good morning and thank you all of, all of you for coming here today. We are, you know you are in the midst of three very important conventions that we have been organizing for so many years. We are doing the World City Summit, Singapore International Water Week, as well as the Clean Environment Summit Singapore. And all this come together today, more importantly, not because they need to work together to provide solutions for urban environments like ourselves, to pursue development and not sacrifice environment at the same time, but for the longer run. A more important existential problem is upon us. Because climate change will be a critical issue that will impact us all. Many countries are already experiencing extreme weather conditions, and they, these weather conditions have devastated lives and livelihoods. In Singapore, we all have witnessed intense rainfall. Just a few weeks ago, half an hour of rainfall was equivalent to half a month of rainfall in July. And as a low-lying island, Singapore is particularly vulnerable to climate change, both when sea level rises, according to our projections of at least about one metre, or more intense rainfall coming too much, too fast, and too frequently. At the same time, longer dry spells will also be something of a common phenomenon in our region. Ladies and gentlemen, as a responsible global citizen, Singapore is doing our part to fight climate change. Our government has implemented a climate action plan that maps out various adaptation and mitigation measures. When we say adaptations, it means what we are going to do to our infrastructure, our processes, so that we are ready to meet climate change, and that has to start now. And when we say mitigation, it means what we do to reduce the emissions that our industries are producing or our transport is producing. At the same time, what we do to ensure that what we do do not make it worse. Therefore, we're investing in solar energy, developing more green buildings, and expanding the public transport while cutting private passenger car growth to zero. I know many Singaporeans, or as many Asians, we always aspire to own a car. But that is not a solution to climate change, and that not even to have an electric car. Because the electric cars have to be fired by our electrical gen cars, and they too burn fossil fuel. Singapore is very constrained where alternative energy is concerned. We don't have enough space, we don't even have enough sunshine, despite the fact that you see the sign most of the time, to generate enough energy to replace what we have today for the energy that we need. For mitigation, we are also implementing a carbon tax in 2019 because the carbon tax will encourage our industry, hopefully nudge them through the tax to pay less tax and therefore innovate to use less energy, be more energy efficient, at the same time produce less greenhouse gas. And this will help transition us to a low carbon economy. But Singapore is not alone in our efforts. During the recent Petersburg Climate Dialogue in Berlin and the Ministerial on Camel Climate Action in Brussels, we had a very candid discussion with our counterparts on the challenges we face in implementing the Paris Agreement because the fine prints are very difficult to get an agreement on. Later today, Singapore will be convening our inaugural, our first ever special ASEAN ministerial meeting on climate action, we call SAMCA, which will also involve later on China, Korea, and uh, Japan, and the extended SAMCA. 
I'm de delighted that Thomas is with us today. He's our special envoy for climate change for Poland's high-level climate champion. And he will share with you his views and his journey when climate discussions were started way back when I wasn't even involved and where we are now and what we need to do together. In Singapore, we are very conscious that fighting climate is everyone's responsibility. And that is why we have launched the Year of Climate Action for 2018. And I'm happy to see so many parties stepping up, stepping forward to pledge their commitment to take action. Since the launch of Climate Action Year this year, on our webpage for Climate Action, over 234,000 Climate Action pledges have been made. Many of you gathered here have mistook pledges, whether as an individual or of organizations. And I urge you to ask your friends to go to the pitch, make a pledge, and make it count. Because no government can pursue sustainable development alone, we have to get our citizens involved. Which is why under Sustainable Development Goal 17, the last goal, it says it talks about partnership for delivering the 2030 development agenda. Businesses and NGOs have an especially important contribution to make because not only do they need to make changes in their processes, they play a big role in advocating, advocating for change to ensure that we have sustainability in both our production and consumption and make to make climate action a domain expertise within your organizations as well as business organizations in Singapore. I want to encourage all of you to continue your efforts to mobilize society at large to take responsibility to take climate action, whether it is our choices for transport, whether it's choices for consumption, plastics, whatever. It's a worthwhile and urgent cause that we all must take up. Let me share you some highlights for the year of climate action so far. It's not exhaustive because many of you are doing your part those who are here, the converted, they're making significant impact, but we need to do more. And just giving a short summary of the kind of actions we have been seeing. One, the Climate Action SG Alliance formed in April this year, spearheaded by Jessica Chiam, a well-known managing editor of Eco Business. 17 influential members from the three pre sectors, the Alliance aims to raise public awareness on climate issues and translate this awareness into action. Later, you will hear Jessica on some projects that the Alliance plans to implement. Secondly, our youth, who have been very passionate and active in championing climate action. To strengthen and sustain the engagement of youth, one initiative we are launching is to have a collaboration with the Singapore Scout Association to develop new climate action program. Scouts will be able to earn their bronze, silver and gold climate action ambassador badges. But they first must actively engage in learning about climate change, commit to take climate action and initiate projects to educate the public. We hope the program will benefit many cohorts of scouts at the same time make them advocates for climate action and they will become a multiplier force to change, for change in this community. Third, the Singapore Environment Council has developed an EcoLife SG mobile app. This will enable users to track their carbon footprint so we get more conscious about the choices we make and what we are burning and destroying. Organizations can track their monthly carbon emissions via a carbon journal and can see the direct correlation between operational costs and carbon emissions. The app has an interesting component for individuals. Users can level up their eco avatar, just like in Pokemon Go, by reducing their carbon footprint. I'm pretending I know what I'm talking about <laughs> because I don't play Pokemon Go. No, challenges on transportation, energy usage, food consumption, 
and waste generation and help users to translate their daily actions into the carbon footprint generated. This helps them to monitor the environmental impact one easy step at a time. Increase consciousness, translate everything into carbon footprint, and as we know how we account our carbo, our, our calories, in the same way too, when we build this consciousness into our daily life, we hope everyone will take action to reduce their carbon footprint. Taking climate change, climate, tackling climate change is not a one-off campaign. It's an ongoing process that supports Singapore's sustainability journey because the future existence of our nation is at stake. At today's forum, I encourage all of you to participate actively to share your experiences and generate ideas on what we can all do together, together, to make Singapore the best livable and sustainable city, not just for ourselves, but for generations to come. I will be moving on to Samka to lead our friends in ASEAN to take climate action. So unfortunately, this time around, I can't be with you, but I leave you in good hands of the organizers as well as the speakers for you to engage each other and to make climate action real in our lives and impactful for future generations. I wish you all a fruitful discussion. Thank you.